I'd never think in my head like, oh, I'm going to practice doing crowd work. You know, you work on new material or you, you know, deliberately do a joke a bunch of times before uh, you're going to do a TV set or something like that to get it just right. But with, with crowd work, it's always just kind of, if something happens, I'll, I'll just kind of react. Please welcome the handsome Phil Hanley! <laughs> Everybody, do you guys ever have like a, like a great idea for a movie and then you tell somebody and they're like, well, that's already a movie, it's called Big Mama's House 2? <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, sir? Did you hear Did you? Okay. All right, because everyone else laughed. <laughs> Don't let them get into your head, guys. <laughs> I had a uh, huge problem with um, high school bullies. Uh, I'm over to the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what joke would you say was cooler? The, <laughs> the big mama's one or the one this high school bullies? I like the high school bullies one. Okay. <laughs> It's just I'm pursuing my dream. <laughs> so when you're deciding how much enthusiasm to have, just kind of keep that in mind. I had done a commercial, and from that I was like, oh, I'd like to do some more commercials and stuff. So I took an improv class, and then I did improv for a little bit, and then a friend was kind of encouraging me to do stand-up, so I just wrote some jokes and tried it. And then they knew right away that's exactly what I wanted to do. Um, but I had a, a, a one-night stand, and um, the woman, she brushed her teeth uh, with my toothbrush. And yeah, it's, it's, it's gross. It, it is, it's disgusting. It, but she tried to justify it. She said, well, we had sex. What's the difference? And I said, well, the, the difference is I wanted to use that toothbrush again. <laughs> is it cool to do a joke that good this early in the show? <laughs> um, and at the time, it was really, there wasn't a ton of stage time in Vancouver. I remember I talked to another comedian and he was saying like, oh, you got to get up five times a week or, you know, that's, that's you know, you're just not going to get good otherwise. And, uh. I remember thinking like, okay, like how can I, trying to plan it out. And to get up that much, in Vancouver at the time, I had to uh, go on in between like bands, like do be like an open mic for bands, but no one would go. It would just be like guys there, like sitting and uh, tuning their guitars basically. That's initially when I started talking to the crowd because you'd have to be like, hey, you, and then, you know, try a joke. Otherwise they wouldn't look up. Right? Because I mean, tuning a guitar, you have to listen and look. Hey girls. Is it uh, a group of all you girls and then the one fella? Oh, okay. I'm going to need the whole story. Hi. Are you, uh, what about the two dudes on the end? Are they with you? One of them. Oh, okay, that guy. Oh. So you're by yourself, sir? Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, if you want to meet someone you want to make a friend that's like really unenthusiastic about things, I can make a a bad attitude. <laughs> So then I just kind of got accustomed to talking to the crowd, but I never thought, um, I never really considered that part of my act, I kind of just thought of it as just like, kind of like survival mode, I would like talk to them, get their attention, then um, do a joke. There was a show in town that, um, there was like a, a French Canadian restaurant, and uh, it was super small, and it was, it was like, I, I, a friend was hosting it, and uh, 
gave it to me and I was like so new like just a few months in so I would host the show but predominantly when it started the crowd was all like French Canadian so yeah you would I, I would have that and I didn't know many comedians so like people I booked people and they wouldn't show up I had like so much time to fill and probably had like five minutes of material and would go up and <laughs> try to entertain people and English you know predominantly was the was the second language um so not only that, but this is like the one restaurant where they could go and speak French. So they were like, oh my God, you know, Zoot Delore. <laughs> Why is this kid, English dude like, you know, talking to us or whatever. And then slowly um, people would started coming and then like my sister would come every week and bring the same people. So I just couldn't, uh, you know, just do the same jokes over and over again. So I would you'd talk to the crowd. How do you guys all know each other? All the girls and everyone besides that one guy. <laughs> Oh, you all live together? Really? Yeah. Wow. Your, so your parents like adopted you all? <laughs> or you go to education, you get educated together? Go to school together? You're in an arts program? Okay, cool, same. <laughs> What, what school? Um, different schools like around the country. Oh, yeah. cool. So some of you guys have like a really long commute. <laughs> <laughs> you live together but you go to different schools? <laughs> <laughs> it is confusing. <laughs> well, it's okay. <laughs> Thanks for trying to explain it. <laughs> You wonder why this guy just hangs out by himself. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a roommate? Two roommates? My, uh, yeah, one. One, okay, yeah. cool. Don't get along with him either. <laughs> Is it a boy roommate or a girl roommate? Uh, you should know this. Bio <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, like I didn't know crowd work was a thing. Like I, I honestly did it, it was like survival mode. And then I would open for people like comics that I really respect and they'd be like, oh hey man, I really like that. You know, when you were like improvising this and that. That was when it dawned on me like, oh, that's not just a thing to do when everything is, you know, going wrong and you're trying to grab the audience's attention. That's actually, it could be part, that's as, as entertaining as, as telling jokes or can be as entertaining as telling jokes. How do you compare the crowd work to the material? <laughs> Good. <laughs> it must be fun living with all these people, right? Most of the time. Most, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes there's problems. <laughs> you not get along with everybody? Oh, okay. Oh, wow. So someone's not cool. <laughs> and most likely somewhere here. <laughs> I know the one girl's a little bit bossy. You're a little bit <laughs> What happens if you guys are out and you bring somebody home? Is it, do you have to share bedrooms? Oh, really? I have to share a bedroom with someone? <laughs> You know those guys that are just like arms crossed, like super macho. Uh, for me, I cannot resist. I cannot not talk to that guy. Like I'm just, I can. It, it has to happen. I don't know. I'm so compelled. Uh, acting tough at a comedy show, and that's just one little thing. But that's an example of something where I just be like, okay, I gotta get to the bottom of of why this guy is so grumpy right now. What what would be the opening line to say to a grumpy guy? With the crossed arms. Do you remember anything you've said? Uh, 
I would maybe start by asking him what's wrong or if he had a really bad day or, you know, when he's like, why? He would be like, well, you're just, you're, <laughs> you're in the front row of a comedy show <laughs> behaving like you're about to have a rumble. Like it's so, <laughs> you're in a safe place. It's so unnecessary for you to be, you know. And then, and then if you could accuse his girlfriend of flirting with you on top of that, then that's... <laughs> Then you got a show. This is going to take forever. The whole episode could just be on these stairs. I can only imagine how fat I would be if I didn't have to do this. <laughs> <laughs>